Here we are in 3.4, talking about truth tables for conditional and biconditional statements, and then how to figure out the truth value without actually constructing a table. So we're going to first start at looking at conditional statements. Okay, so remember conditional statements are the if-then with our arrow as our symbol. So we think of it as the antecedent implies the consequent. Okay, the if implies the then. So one thing to keep in mind with conditional statements is it is only false when the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. So what this means is it's only false when we have a true implies false scenario, okay? That's when it's false, okay? All right, so let's take a look at this first truth table here of the conditional then. All right, so we have true implies true. All right, true implies true. So that's going to be true. All right, then we have true implies false. Well, according to the conditional statements, it's only false. This is the scenario when it's false. So true implies false is false. False implies true. That's true. And false implies false is also true. Okay. So now what I want you to do is quickly construct a truth table for not Q implies not P. Okay. So I'm actually going to draw that column in there. I want you to think of the pieces. Okay. So we have a not Q implies not P. So that tells us we need a not Q column, we need a not P column, and then we need a not Q implies not P. Go ahead, fill that in, uh, pause the video, and we'll come back. Okay, so take a look at the truth table here, and hopefully it matches what you came up with. What I want you to note is this column here, this not Q implies not P, matches this column from the original conditional statement, P implies Q. So that's where a little fun fact comes in. Every time you hear or utter a conditional statement, you can reverse and negate the antecedent and consequent, and the truth value will not change. So that's what we did right here between these two guys, okay? All right, so now let's go ahead on to this next example, all right? So um, using words instead of symbols. If you're cool, you will wear clothing with your school name on it, okay? So there's our if, then, all right? If you're cool, then you will wear clothing with your school name on it. Then if we reverse the antecedent and the consequent and also negate those, if you don't wear clothing with your school name on it, then you're not cool. So you can kind of think of it that way, and um, both are implying the same thing, all right? So what I want you to try to do now is before you fill out this truth table, I want you to fill out just this row, all right? These three pieces of this row. So looking at this truth table, we have the entire quantity of P or Q and not P implies Q. So remember, whatever we're trying to find the truth value for, that's always in our last column. So I want you to see if you can figure out what needs to go in here. We need to break it up, okay? So pause the video, fill those three things out, and come back. Is this what you got? So you needed one column to be P or Q, another column to be not P. Now you might have switched these up, and that's okay. And then you also needed the piece that says P or Q and not P. All right, so remember, we break up, we put in all of the pieces. Okay, go ahead, fill in the truth table, pause the video, and come back. Okay, check your truth table. Did you get what I got? More importantly, look at the end. This last column, everything is true. Okay, so what does that mean? Do you remember what that is called? All right, that is called a tautology. 
Remember, we talked about this in the last video, tautology, all right, where it's a compound statement, right? A compound statement that is always true. All right, so that kind of takes care of our um, biconditional and it helps us reiterate how to set up those truth tables. Now we're gonna move on to conditional statements. So conditional statements, remember, are the double-sided arrow and it's the if and only if, okay? So biconditional statements are true, okay? when both the antecedent and consequent are true, and they are true when both the antecedent and consequent are false, okay? So basically, what we can take away from this is the biconditional is true when components meaning the antecedent and the consequent, the components have the same truth value. Okay, so for instance, if we're looking at this table uh, right here, just filling in the biconditional truth table, right? We have true implies true, so since both are true, true if and only if true, we have ourselves a true biconditional. Uh, true if and only false, those don't match up, so that's gonna be false. Then we have a false if and only true, those don't match up, so also false. And then our last one, false if and only false, since those are the same, we've got ourselves a true statement. Okay, so now we're going to construct a truth table for this biconditional, P or Q, if and only if, not P implies not Q. So not only is it a biconditional, there's also a conditional statement within it. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to fill out these three components here. Stop. After you've done that, check your answer and then go ahead and fill in the rest of the truth table. Okay, did you fill in those three components correctly? So remember, we have to break everything up. We needed that P or Q. We needed the not P portion, and we needed the not P implies Q portion. And then when we're looking in this last column, we will be comparing this second guy to this third guy, uh, or to, sorry, to this guy over here, okay? So go ahead, pause the video, fill in the truth table, then check your work. Okay, take a look at your truth value or your truth table and compare it to mine. Looking at this last column, I got all trues. Um, so double check that. And remember, what is that called when our truth um, is all true for every statement? We have ourselves a tautology. Okay, the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get some more practice determining the truth value without using truth tables. So this example, Dear Mr. Bob Blitzer, I'm pleased to inform you that a personal super million dollar prize entry, number 66556710, has been assigned in your name and as indicated above. If your super million dollar prize entry number matches the winning pre-selected number, and you return the number before the deadline stated below, then you will win one, what is that huge number, right? Uh, what are we looking at here? We're looking at one billion dollars. It's as simple as that. Sounds pretty easy, right? So can you sue for false claim if all that happens is that your entry number does not match the special number? So you get one free issue of the magazine and are billed for the remaining 11 issues for the year? Hmm, let's see, okay? So the first thing we need to do is we need to break down um, this fact here, all right, into our simple statements. So 
or actually we're, we're breaking up up here, all right, the, the underlined portion, all right? So, and we're gonna determine the truth value um, based off of here. All right, so we need to break it up into the simple components. So let P be your super million dollar prize entry number matches the winning pre-selected number. So did ours? No, we're saying if it does not. So we're gonna claim that that portion is false. That isn't true. All right, did you return the number before the stated deadline? Yes, you still did that, so that is true. Okay, did you win $1 billion? So R is you win $1 billion, is that part true? No, you only won one free issue and you're billed the rest of the year for the 11 remaining issues. All right, so now, what we need to do is we need to um, write the underlined claim with letters and symbols. Okay, so here's the if your number matches the winning number and you return it before the stated deadline, then you win $1 billion. Okay, so this is our P, right? We have an and, so what symbol goes there? And you return it before your deadline. That's our Q. Whoops. Q. All right, but I see this if then. So that means I need to group this together. Okay, then, so our arrow, you win $1 billion. That's our R. Okay, so now we're going to use our truth values, plug them in here, and see what the actual truth value is to determine well, can we sue this company? Right? Okay, so we have our statement p and q implies r all right well we said p up above was false so we have false and what was q q was true so we have false and true implies and our r was false right <clears throat> okay so now if we have false and false, or sorry, false and true, this becomes false. And then we have a false implies false. Well, based on our conditional rules, if we have false implies false, what's the truth value there? Well, the truth value is true. So can we sue? The answer is no. We cannot sue because the credit card company or company's claim is true, unfortunately. All right, so that's all we have for today. So if you have questions, make sure you bring those to the table next time we see each other. Have a good one. Bye.